thanks very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I tried to give the title of the presentation a fishy title. I'm going to talk about fish taxes versus subsidies. And I've called it the mineral <coughs> and the whale. With the, uh, at the moment, the whale being the subsidies and the, uh, and the minnow being the fish taxes. And I want to present how we can try and turn that around. So this is an overview of the presentation. Um, as I said, I'm going to focus on fiscal policies that affect fisheries, uh, based on some work that I actually did some years ago, but now I was encouraged to update it for in preparation for this presentation. Uh, fish taxes, as those of you who will know who are fishery economists who work in fisheries, are about decreasing fishery effort. And taxes, as I've said, are currently a minnow because although fish taxes have this positive effect in terms of reducing uh, fishing effort, they're currently rather low. But there is some evidence which I'll present that these taxes are increasing. Um, fishing subsidies, by contrast, are generally bad for uh, fish, uh, depending on the type of subsidy, and I'll come to that, but, uh, but as a result, because they increase fishing effort and lead to overfishing. And therefore, uh, and subsidies are currently the whale, because they're at the moment pretty massive, and I'll present some of the latest figures, but there is uh, some examples of some progress. And I'm going to rely on data from a, a researcher called Sumayula, uh, who's done a lot of work in this area and has published papers over the last uh, decade or so updating the figures on fishery subsidies. So as I've said, it's the, the minnow and the whale, the low taxes versus the massive subsidies. And the question is, when will the minnow catch the whale? So this is a famous diagram, uh, those of you who study fishery economists, economics, showing that at the moment uh, what happens in an open access fishery is there's too much fishing. Uh, the fishing effort keeps going to the, what's called the bioeconomic uh, equilibrium, where um, the profits are essentially uh, dissipated or, uh, or uh, eaten up by the different fishery with fishers all, all competing against each other, and you have increased uh, fishing effort along the bottom and declining uh, profit along the, uh, <coughs> the other axis. So how can you, you do that? And the, the issue is you need to uh, use fishery taxes to eat up the rent, uh, as exemplified in the diagram, and by taxing the rent, you reduce the effort and increase the, the uh, increase the revenues to the government and also you can actually increase the profits to the fish, fishermen. And fishermen. Um, so fishing revenues are crucial for some of the um, least developed countries and the smaller and developing states, the SIDS, um, who, develop, who uh, rely heavily on them. Fisheries examples are the Pacific, Mauritania and Mozambique. And depending on the country, these can get any, up to a third of their government revenue from uh, fisheries. Um, there has been some progress in inc increasing taxes on these uh, fisheries in the last decade or so. Just to give one uh, quite positive example, there was a lot of uh, work done in the Pacific that the very rich fishery tuna um, reserves of the Pacific was being overfished by uh, uh, foreign fishing fleets, uh, partly because the fishery license fees were so low but there has been a big push to increase these fishery license fees now by a factor of four, by fourfold. And these uh, fishery license fees have now reached $230 million in uh, 2012. So that's an example how, despite being uh, fairly low, fishery taxes have been increasing. Uh, however, the situation is even worse than the original diagram I showed because, in fact, because of subsidies, uh, some fleets actually operate beyond uh, the original equilibrium I showed to, to go even further down with even uh, more effort. And in, in many cases, these uh, fisheries would actually be unprofitable were it not for the uh, subsidy. And that's the case of many of the, uh, the fleets of the EU, as well as some other fleets. Um, and this is quite an interesting diagram showing the latest subsidy estimates from 2013, I think it is, 
um, of the main uh, most extreme examples. Uh, you see that the EU is the biggest, then Japan, then China, then US, then Russia, and then interestingly Indonesia. So these are the main uh, examples of fishing subsidies. However, you have to distinguish between what are called beneficial uh, subsidies, i.e. subsidies that actually help the fishery because they go into things like improved monitoring and enforcement and, and other things which actually make sure they improve the management of the fishery versus capacity enhancing or negative subsidies which subsidize uh, often in terms of fuel the amount of uh, uh, boats coming into the fishery. So interestingly the US in fact, is primarily beneficial subsidies. So they're spending a lot of money on monitoring enforcement and looking after their fishery. So when you deduct the, uh, the beneficial subsidies, the, the capacity enhancing or the negative subsidy in the case of the US is actually quite small. So uh, in fact, fisheries is one example of where the US is, is quite progressive in how they manage their uh, resor resources. The EU, by contrast, along with Japan and to some extent China, most of their subsidies are capacity enhancing, so they're, they're damaging the fishery with their subsidies. And then there are a few kind of subsidies which are ambiguous, the black, which are, it's hard to distinguish. <coughs> so the subsidies are the way, as I said, because as you saw from the numbers, uh, these subsidies are, are still pretty enormous. Uh, the figures are the global capacity enhancing subsidies, particularly uh, uh, fuel subsidies for, for boats, uh, were $20 billion in 2009. Uh, however, there has been some progress because the globally beneficial subsidies, things like monitoring and enforcement, as I've already said, have been going up. And together with ambiguous subsidies, these were about $15 billion. So you see the balance between the negative and the positive subsidies are getting closer. And as you saw from the numbers, the EU, despite endless uh, discussion uh, within the EU about the common fishery policy and so on, still is the worst in terms of these capacity enhancing subsidies and then uh, Japan. And the USA, as I've demonstrated, is much better. And there have been attempts over the last decade within the World Trade Organization to try and address these uh, fishery subsidies, but the, uh, the net result is essentially be zero. There's no, it's sadly no progress. However, the one bright light on the horizon uh, was alluded to by Camilla is there is a target on, on uh, fisheries, and in that target is actually an explicit mention, and I'll show you the text, to reduce uh, fishery subsidies. So this is the SDG Marine Target 14, to conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. And 14.6 is that by 2020, to prohibit certain forms of fishery subsidies which contribute to overfishing, and to refrain from introducing new subsidies. So it is quite a positive sign that uh, despite the, uh, the stalled negotiations within the WTO, despite the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the common fisheries policy in the EU hasn't shown much improvement, there is going to be hopefully renewed pressure through this SDG uh, focus on uh, marines and fishery subsidies. So to conclude, and this is my final slide, I have now, as you see, taken the minnow and blown it up and asked the question, when will the uh, tax minnow be able to catch the whale subsidy? Thank you.